Previously on Resident Evil. But it's still frame. Just like you said, Dad. And, uh... Just like you said, Dad. And, uh... Um... Now, if you go, keep going this direction, and to the left, there's a stairway, so you may as well try going down there. I can't remember, are they capable of using stairways? Stairs, the zombie's mortal enemy. <laughs> it really would be. Not his mortal enemy, gotta yeah, shoot him. the video of the day LP and up nightmares away uh, welcome back to uh, Resident Evil um, with me I have a uh, we have a guest mm -hmm. it is it's me uh, Owen also known as Immortalium from Victory Achieved Gaming and today I'll be of course just as before uh, helping you through Resident Evil which admittedly can be quite a tricky game at certain points, as we very well learned last time. <laughs> oh yeah, I, 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 yeah, I completely went through it without help, and I didn't need anyone. D dies, <laughs> in, dies in the first I five seconds. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, point is anyway that uh, I'm gonna do my best to support you, and I believe we're in a somewhat tricky situation, only in the sense that. Well, actually, no, for two reasons. One is we've actually expended a decent amount of ammo, and secondly, we only have one ink ribbon left to save, I believe, if I'm correct. Yeah, because so, we saved at the end of the last session. Yes, so that means, like, we can save once more, and then we desperately need to find some more ink ribbons. Um, so I'd say without further ado, we should actually get into the game and, like, give it our best shot. I also want to remind myself how far we actually did get. <laughs> like to tease you, those little loading screens. Um, so I believe, if I'm correct, we went into that hallway where we picked up some herbs and an ammo clip, and we hopped out to the like the graveyard out at the back, but we immediately ran back in, I believe. And oh, actually, the other thing, actually, I should probably ask this before we do anything else. Um, did you get that controller you were talking about? I am currently using it. Perfect. Okay, so we'll need to find, like, which control key works better for you. You remember there's the original version and then there's the adjusted version. So if you're currently using the, um, like, the adjusted version. Um, right. Which might, work for, which might work best for you. The only thing is when the camera changes angles sometimes, you, your character can just act a bit funny due to this movement system. Uh, the other method is tank controls, you'll remember that, and those are the way that the game was originally meant to be played, however it is an old style of movement and some people do genuinely prefer the adjusted version, so I'll, again I'll leave it up to you. Uh, do you remember the control scheme, by the way? Um, I mean, it's fairly easier to use a controller than the 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 keyboard yeah i would agree with that um i would definitely not play this personally with a keyboard and mouse uh 
Um, although I do believe that there would be some people out there who prefer it, but that's, you know, it's everyone's taste. My personal preference would be the controller. Um, so if you go into your start menu, I believe, and we can go down to controls just to quickly reacquaint ourselves. Plus, I believe you can adjust into several different control schemes. You'll probably want to go with the default, but you should take a look at the others anyway, just in case. So if we go into that, um, yeah, do you see where it says type A? Yeah. So I, excuse me, I believe you can go through several uh, different configurations. Um, and you can just take a look at them. It'll change the layout on the controller and you can decide which one you prefer the most. So you see, for instance, uh, you can see that, yeah, they've just rearranged some of the stuff. And that is quite a good thing that I think um, that Capcom do. Of course, rebinding, like being able to rebind your controls is, of course, very important also. But I do like the fact that they offer multiple uh, control schemes. Uh, so I'll let you t just take a look at all of these control schemes and decide which one you'd like the most. I think there might be five, but I'm not 100%. I tend to go with the default myself. Uh, but I do know some people prefer, you know, other uh, control schemes. So, yeah. I love also the fact that we're in the room with the ticking clock. <laughs> yeah, that is um, definitely not noticeable at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no one can hear that. <laughs> yeah, constantly ticking. No, that's not there. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of when we, when um, my friend and I, we were doing chantilly's, and whenever your health got very low, it would start binging, like, you know, beep. And I'd be like, oh no, the viewers are going to like hate this, <laughs> but I can't do anything about it. <laughs> we, it's up to us to actually get, the, yeah, I was right, the five uh, control schemes. Anyway, yeah, so it's fine. Like, this isn't anywhere near as annoying. So, it's just something to comment on. So, which control scheme do you like the most, out of curiosity? Um, I think I'll just stick with the default for now perfect that's the one that i'm most familiar with anyway so that's fine i just thought i'd give you the option and we're also sticking with uh the alternate control which is also fine uh, yeah. so in that case uh let me think about this now have we actually okay, actually you know what, the safest way could you show me your map and just like um be, you can see right here it's the it'll be the right bumper um let's see so yeah, I'm correct. We didn't go on in the room on the right. Um, that's the graveyard out at the back, uh, which we can also explore. I also remind you that it, Resident Evil love the fact that they show you which rooms you've picked up everything in and which rooms you haven't. For instance, the hallway in which we picked up the herbs and the ammo clip, you can see we've 100% gathered everything there. So that's fantastic. Also, that, oh sorry, go on. That is actually one of the better map systems I've seen. Mm, definitely. Also, just to remind you as well that you can't necessarily get everything in every room immediately. For instance, the room we're currently in, there's something else to be gathered, but from what I remember, it's something we can't actually get right now. Uh, so that's the other thing to take into account. But, you know, it's fantastic for like just being able to explore and know, like, okay, I've got this room done, perfect. What I was going to say is that we have a couple of options here, and I'll let you pick which options you want to go with. Uh, first option is to go out that graveyard at the back. Second option is the room that we 100% explored on the left. We can go upstairs and explore some of the upstairs area there. We can also go across the hallway, and you see where that gray door is on the right. Uh, we haven't actually gone in there, which is interesting because Barry, our buddy Barry, uh, actually told us to go explore that side of the mansion. So, you know, that's also an option. But, you know, we're going to have to explore this whole mansion, you know, at some point. So, yeah, I, I think those are our best three options at the moment. And, you know, you can pick whichever one you want. Just remember, don't go out the door at the bottom. The door at the bottom leads to death because you will get absolutely eviscerated by dogs. <laughs> I mean, it, it might it might make for a fun scene, but no, I'm not. I'm gonna avoid that. <laughs> I, ideally, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Oh yeah, of course the 
go through the door into the wizard and then look through the screen as well. Very atmospheric. Also, by going this way, I'm pretty sure I know which direction you want to go in. So, I'm trying to remember what we went over last time. Um, I believe in your inventory currently, you'll have your gun, you'll have your ammo clip, uh, which hasn't been fully used, but we've used part of it. And I believe you have the herbs to heal yourself and an ink ribbon. I think that's that's the case. And remember that Jill has eight item slots, um, two more than what Chris would have had. Um, if you're trying to access your inventory, I believe it's triangle. Um. Is it not triangle? Oh, so I say triangle, the, the top face button. If it's an Xbox controller, it'd be Y. Right, it's 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 Y. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, just to take that into account. I apologize again, folks, for that, but you see, I have to do it the other way around uh, with my co-host on Victory Chief Gaming because uh, she's used to a PlayStation controller, so she uses that. Uh, but uh, most PC games give their controls out in, you know, Xbox controls. So I have to sometimes remind her, like, you know, triangle is Y, and, you know, Y is triangle, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, why is that the case? <laughs> yeah, very good point, yeah. <laughs> Why must it be that way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, yeah, we are in a somewhat okay position. We would obviously like more ammo and stuff, and more ink ribbons, but besides that, I think we're in a pretty good position. Um, so in that case, uh, we should continue to explore, and we're going to be going upstairs because that's the only direction over here that we can actually go. Um, you learned the hard way last time that the uh, door to the basement is locked, and that's where you ended up having to face that uh, zombie that you unloaded ten rounds into. Um, although, actually, yeah, going down here is actually a good point because there is something I want to point out, which is if you go down here, uh, you see that the zombie's body is still here. Yeah, even though the it, like still, it, like the, the cutscene happened, where it like chased uh, after not us. Just, not just that, but you know, in a lot of games, when you leave an area and come back, the enemy's body will have disappeared. Uh, it's interesting that they've in made an intentional decision to have the zombie remain where you killed him. Uh, just want to point that out. Um, anyway, so the door ahead of you is locked, which means that we're going to have to go upstairs. And yeah, you should definitely be dashing as much as you can um, here. So we're going to be going down this hallway over here, and we're going to be run. Actually, one thing you can pick up, uh, which we didn't last time because that was more you know, concentrated on everything else, is if you go over to the body that the zombie was chewing on when we first encountered him. Uh, which is not that way, it's the opposite direction. <laughs> Remember, we came down this way um, and then turned this corner and there was the zombie. There's also this buddy. Uh, examine his body. Uh, I believe that's A. I believe it's A. Nothing's happening. Okay. Oh, did we already pick it up, maybe? Oh, we'll go up. the corpse of your comrade, Kenneth. So, does it have what I'm thinking? It looks like he's holding something. <laughs> yes. Um, and you'll see now what he's holding. It's not an item that will take up an item slot, so don't worry about that. Uh, it's the film that belonged to Kenneth. I need a video player to see what's recorded on it. Um, so, that's just good to know. When we come across a video player, we should try to play this and see if we can get any information out of it. Having said that, now we can actually continue to explore this doorway over here in particular. Yeah, I, I don't think we're any, anywhere near a, uh, a Radio shock, Shack or a Blockbuster <laughs> yeah, to get one of those. Yeah. Pop over and just grab a VCR, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do love, even though know, like, there's no threat in this particular room, I just love the atmosphere of it. The way we come out here and we're like unsure what's in front of us. Oh yeah, because like uh, the camera angle is like looking right at you. Yeah. Like it is actually genuinely um, quite tense 
uh, like having to like walk towards the camera sometimes and not know if there's something beyond it. But this, you know, this room is safe. I kind of spoiled it for you last time because I was just like, let's just get you some ammo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this next room, this is the second floor now. Um, and if we pop in. So there's a very nice detail to the left, which is the mirror. Um, also, you might notice something at the bottom of the screen as well. Oh no, just like, he's just taking a nap. Yeah, he's had, he's had a, a hard time drinking <laughs> he's passed out. Uh, so remember how to check for zombies without using ammo, right? Uh, no, it's been two weeks. <laughs> So you go into your inventory, you take out your knife, and you just kind of give the zombie on the ground a stab, just to check, is it alive? If it's alive, it's going to go, and like, get off. Um, and if it isn't, then you know that he's not going to get off. And also, I would recommend, although it is quite finagly, when fighting, if you, uh... How do you crouch? Um... So you don't crouch per se, you assume the like aim mode, uh, which I believe on your controller, it would it be the right trigger? Left. Yeah. Oh, left trigger, sorry, okay. Um, so left trigger and then, yeah, point down, and I believe then is the right trigger, is it? Yeah, so he would have reacted to that. So, like, he, we know that he's not alive. What I was going to say before is, in the effort of ammo conservation, because that is quite important in this game, yeah. um, basically, whenever you knock down a zombie with your gun, a good idea is to stab them. And ideally stab them, like, from behind, like where the legs would be, because the zombie's going to get off facing away from you, just to give you more time, if they're actually alive, they will start getting off, and uh, you'll need to, like, run away and get some distance. Although, actually, with your control scheme, that might be quite easy to do. We'll have to see. Point is, I'll let you explore this little hallway yourself, for the moment at least, because I don't want to take away too much of the fun of playing this game. Right, just double-checking which button was run, because <laughs> no. I'll need that. Oh, definitely. By the way, do you hear that? Oh, the, the, um, the menacing snarl. Oh, no, it's just the guy snoring. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that, that that's just Dave. <laughs> yeah, it is just Dave, just like that. Um, yeah. He really so, should get a sleep apnea test. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he's, been, he's been keeping everyone up. He's locked from the other side. So, yeah, that means you basically need to go around, and you'll unlock the door. Oh, hi, Dave. Yeah, there's Dave. <laughs> Dave the man. So, yeah, what do you want to do with Dave over here, huh? That seems like a logical course of action. Now, remember, you can't run while he's aiming. So, I don't know if you can stop that or not. Now... She's taken quite a bit of damage, which is indicated by the fact that she's holding her side. Also, if you go into your menu, you'll see you're at caution. Now, I believe for the difficulty we're on, I believe you'll die with one more bite. So I would recommend at this point using the mixed herbs. Just to get your health back. Perfect. Okay, so now we can go back and sort out Dave. Yeah, we gotta put them out of everyone's misery. Although the other thing you could do actually while you're in the inventory is if you want to put one more bullet back in your gun, that could be a good idea. Then again, I would hope we're not going to use 14 rounds of ammunition on it. Uh, so what, what, the way you do it from the menu is you combine it with the pistol. Oh, right. Yeah, no problem. A again, it is an old game, so there are some like little intricacies with it, but oh man, I love this game. Um, you can pick up a herb there if you want as well. Also, the mirror, I love the mirror placement because you will actually see a zombie coming around if um, if the zombie is actually coming. See him? Uh, oh, 
Okay, so you can shoot down to the ground if you want. Oh. Okay, there we go. Hard game. It's a, it's a hard game, isn't it? Yeah, I guess okay. I guess Dave's snoring did us in. <laughs> he did. Uh, now uh, we're in the eternal sleep, so to speak. So one thing I will recommend, and I always feel bad about this. I feel bad when uh, when Caitlin, who is on the channel with myself, when I have to do this to her because this always feels like I'm like kind of telling them too much what to do and criticizing them. It's never meant to be like an actual criticism. It's advice. It's meant to help uh, the person playing. But one thing I will recommend is that when you're facing these zombies, you're going to want to try to put as much distance as possible. Um, because I do notice that you're kind of shooting the zombie point blank, which might work if you had like a shotgun or something, but with a pistol, stand a bit further away and, you know, shoot them as they approach. That'd be my personal recommendation. Yeah, I, I don't have any uh, zombie breath mints, so uh, <laughs> probably be best to stand away. <laughs> Or zombie spray, that would also yeah. be very helpful. Yeah. Now, one thing I also remind you is that since we've reloaded our save, that means that we need to pick up uh, the item off of that body again, the videotape. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Um, so, while this is happening, let me think about what I should actually talk about um because part of the part of the issue here is i don't want to spoil anything for you ideally so what would be a good thing to talk about well just the fact that i guess i think i might have mentioned it last time but do you remember this version of the game uh which console it was originally released for um the original oh the resident e um Is it the PS1? Uh, the very first Resident Evil was the PS1, that is correct. Um, this remake, however, was released on a different platform, which I'll just say it was the GameCube, the Nintendo GameCube. Um, now, Nintendo, I guess at the time, didn't like the fact that their console was viewed as, you know, pretty much just a casual kind of uh, young gamer console. They wanted some mature titles, which is something that they've kind of always tried to do to a certain degree. Like for instance, um, I, I sorry, I just, my eye caught there, the little mosaic that was on the right. I was like looking, the camera angle was looking at it perfectly, which means what must that look like if you're just standing by the actual, um, on the actual stairway looking at it, it must look quite bizarre. Uh, do you see that one on the right, the kind of the green square? With the yeah. In the middle? I was just wondering what that looks like if you were to like, stand first person you know right beside it right uh, based on how it looks perfect look <laughs> from the camera angle that we're looking at it from um but anyway you can continue on so basically at the time nintendo had a deal with capcom that the next couple of resident Evil games would be exclusive to the gamecube uh this was one of them i believe resident evil zero is one of them i hope i remember that right but the one that everyone remembers is resident evil 4 uh, which Resident Evil 4 was such a big deal uh, that even though it was initially released for the GameCube exclusive, it saw a release pretty quickly on the PS2, just because they realized they had something and they needed to actually get that money um, <laughs> kind of coming in. Um, but we kind of think that with Nintendo with a couple of other like releases. I'd say right now, the main kind of mature game that they release on the Switch, for instance, I would say is the Bayonetta games. Um, which are quite mature. And I believe with the Wii U, the disastrous Wii U, you had your, um, what was that game? I remember the game from the play with. It was like a, a, um, like a very cliche kind of action movie game uh, that was quite gory. It, you start out in a prison, you have to break out and that kind of stuff. I can't remember what it is. Oh, we got, uh, or buddy, what was his name? Yeah, fire. <laughs> Now remember we have our herb. Um, so yeah, stand. Yeah, definitely heal. I would recommend that. And yeah, try 
you can even use the mixed herbs to guarantee your full health. Or, okay. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, um, yeah, usually you'd want to run behind them. And stuff. Okay, you might want to run away. Uh, because, yeah. And actually, this is a good position we're in now because um, we can actually kind of run down this hallway a bit and get some space. So I would, I would recommend switching your to the pistol again. Also, don't go any further because I, I, I just take a look at... Yeah, yeah, this is a good idea. Yeah, combine that with your... Now, take a look behind you and just realize why you shouldn't be going any further. Oh. Uh. Another zombie. Yeah, so I want to make sure that you survive. So walk towards the camera a little bit, just so we can get an ID on the other guy. No, 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 the, towards the camera, towards, like, yeah, where the screen would be. Just walk towards the screen here. Yeah, fire, fire. Oh. Wow. Luckily, we have, um, I'd say run away again. Yeah, down here is good. Use the herb in your inventory. Yeah, that isn't everything, but you might be able to survive another fight here. Now, now just lay into him. Perfect. He should probably go down. Oh! I did not mean okay. to do that. <laughs> and now, I, I stab him. Make sure that he's dead. Right. <laughs> that That's the important part. Very much so, yeah. This, oh, okay. Actually, the other way we can tell that he's dead, for sure, is the pool of blood that's coming out from him. Do you see that? Yeah. So, yeah, we, we know for sure that this guy is actually dead. Now, is, is, this, is this Dave or, 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 or James? I believe this guy's Dave. I think James is just hanging out a bit up the hallway. So, um, the other thing, there's a couple of other um, items you can pick up um, over there. I don't know if you spotted any of them. Oh, God, we need to be careful of uh, if, what was it, James? James. Hopping down the hallway for um, a midnight snack. As usual in video games, the big sparky thing you probably want to grab. Now the only thing is, oh yeah, we do need that actually. We still haven't found an item box that we can hide. So yeah, examine an item. So, excuse me, certain items need to be examined to get things to happen with them. Um, other things are kind of more just you know tertiary. It's like, oh look at the you know the pistol that I'm holding, for instance. But with this one, it's actually a good idea to examine this item because something will happen if you examine it. Thus, the tutorial, I guess. <laughs> Did I miss the opportunity to examine it? No, 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 no. Go, just click on this and you should see the examine option. Yeah, oh, right. And basically, you want to kind of examine it and just, there's something about this that you know, is important to examine. I don't want to say too much, of course. Also, I believe you need to check using the A button as well. I don't know if you're doing that or not. The arrowhead looks like it can be removed. So now we've got the arrowhead by itself. But you might be wondering why we did that. There is a reason for that. So don't worry. The other thing you might want to do right now, because I think it would also be a good idea, is if you pop out of your menu and look at the bottom of the mirror, there is something there. I don't know if you spotted that or not. I mean, besides James' feet. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Every one of those is precious at the moment. So... Yeah, you can do that, and you should probably put six more rounds into your gun. Just 
Now, another good thing to do just before we pop out is if you look at your map, I just want to see how much is left once we pass James here. Not much. A couple of doors, and that's it, really. So I'll leave it up to you whether you want to face James right now or if you want to explore somewhere. what your strategy here is going to be. You just want to give him a poke and run away, is it? <laughs> Perfect! That was actually pretty good. Okay, switch your gun down this hallway. That is actually a good spot. And we know that he's running towards us, so I believe you could just open fire right now down the hallway. Make sure she's aiming down the hallway and not into the ground. Okay. Run over and stab him. And uh, ideally do it where his feet are, by the way, just because if he pops off, um, he'll take longer to like hit you. Okay, run, run. I say run. Um, we might want to swap to, or okay, put gun more rounds into the um, gun. I'd say. Perfect. Okay, let's. Uh, I say go back to that door over there, and oh, actually, yeah, that is a problem. Okay, let's just. Okay, he's gonna probably turn the corner. Oh boy, you're taking a risk here. Oh. Run, run, I say run. Run. Oh wow, you uh, ran down past him. I wasn't thinking you were gonna do that. Oh wait, he's caught on like a little chair or whatever. He's he, the polygons. Okay. Is he dead now? Um, either a pool of blood's gonna come out, or we need to stab him. Oh, pool of blood. Look. Pool of blood. Okay, so we've dealt with him. Oh boy, we're going through our ammo fast. Um, so that's fine for the moment. Uh, we want to probably examine those two doors now, now that we've killed them. Just see what's happening over there. It's locked from the other side. It's actually very Dark Souls now, I think about it. They unlocked it. Oh. So, yeah, this is this was a door that was locked from the other side, I believe. So, if you had encountered this door before, you wouldn't have been able to go through it. You now can. Um, if you take a look at your map, I think you can put make a logical guess of where this is going to go. Yeah. Actually, that's already in there. So, uh, Have we actually gone into the upper loft area at this point? Um, I, we might have went into it briefly last time. Okay. So, this area, I like to what's called Ring Around the Roses, uh, the zombie out here. I'll just tell you this because I want to try to conserve ammo. I know I'm spoiling a little bit of stuff, but this is early on in the game. I want to get you going, and then I'll kind of take you off the leash, so to say, a bit. So basically, there's a zombie out here. I never personally bother killing the zombie because it's very easy to just run in the opposite direction and go around to the other side, you know? So I just like to... as I said, play ring around the roses of the zombie. So, pop out here and just watch out for the zombie because there can be certain camera angles that can make it difficult to ascertain where he is. But that shadow is really cool. Love that shadow. So, yeah, I never bother killing this guy. Um, now, there is a knife that's sparking here. Do you see that? You want to grab that. This is a new type of item. So, it's a dagger. And this is a defensive item. So basically, you remember all those times where you were grabbed by those zombies? Yeah. So what's going to happen now is you're going to stab a dagger into their head, which does a bunch of damage, but also lets you go. However, it will use up the dagger. I've had someone ask me, why don't they just pull it back out and stab them again? I don't know. It's video game logic. Maybe these daggers are brittle. 
Um, the point is... Breath of the Wild mechanics before it was cool. <laughs> so I believe the other thing is... I believe you have it set to automatically happen. We'll double check that in the settings. Um, but yeah, so the other thing is they mentioned equipping a defensive item. Um, I guess I can point that out to you in the item screen as well. It's because there's multiple types of defensive items, but it doesn't actually, I don't think it occupies like a normal item slot. Um, so I believe they're gonna probably mention, yeah, the whole, if it's set to manual, you'd have to use LB to use the defensive item. I believe you currently got a set to auto, but we'll double check that. So first thing first is, let's just check that. So if you go back to you, oh yeah, here's a good point. So yeah, do you see where the defensive items are listed, which is over there? Yeah. And you can see, for instance, that we've got zero of those ones. It's because you can swap uh, between them. So that's how that one works. Um, and also, if we check your settings, which I believe are under controls, um, it should, one of the things you can adjust is whether you want defensive items to be automatically used or uh, manually used. I believe the reason for that would be to try to preserve certain types that it might be better, yeah, to set to auto. So that means uh, like you don't have to do anything. She gets grabbed from the front. Uh, she will automatically just stab them in the head with that dagger. Um, basically, at thi on this kind of level of difficulty, you basically always want to use your, um, your knife. Now, maybe on the lower difficulties, there might be certain situations where you'd rather take the damage and keep hold of, like, the defensive item. But, um, yeah. So, we know where this leads. We've been out here a number, a number of times. Yes, back to, um, the main like, room. Is it called a, a... It's not a foyer or something, is it? Like, the, the entryway to a house? Uh, I don't know. I don't know any of these fancy terms. <laughs> yeah, you got your you got your eating room, you got your sleeping room, you got your bathroom. That's it. We don't need any more. That's all room. you need, really. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there's something else to get in there, but again, I'm concerned about getting it before we've actually found an item box. Right. Um, so I'd hold off on picking up for the moment. Um, so, yeah, we, we've ended up here, and something to keep out an eye out for is anything that has an indentation, like that arrowhead, uh, because that's something we've got right now to see. Right. We also tried those other doors. There was a door you didn't go through. Um, I will just point that out. But that's also up to you to decide. So you can move which floor you're on at the top there. I believe you, if you just go left or right, it's probably automatically swap them. It's uh, up or down. Up or down, okay. But you see at the top part there, there was a doorway right in front of it that you didn't go into. All right. But we don't have to go through that one right now. I know what's behind there. Um, so, but I obviously don't want to say anything. So we can also go out the back to the graveyard, or we can go through the door on the right. Uh, we can also technically save if you want, but keep in mind that if you save now, we'll be completely relying on finding another ink ribbon before we can save the next time. Right. Um, I, I think I'm going to call this an episode and then go to the, the, through this door next time. So, um, I hope you enjoyed, uh, Dying Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Um, <laughs> and, uh, just dying this time, at least, than the first one. Yeah, I did, I did a bit better. Um, just a bit. Uh, catch you, catch you next time. Uh, Nightmare signing out. Immortality Mobile Sign.